Welcome to Net Zero. What role does effective reporting play in fostering understanding of climate change threats and inspiring urgent actions? Bernadette woods Blackie is an Emmy-winning meteorologist. She directs Climate Central's Climate Matters program, providing weather and climate insights to journalists worldwide. Net Zero is pleased to welcome Bernadette woods Blackie. Welcome to Net Zero, Bernadette. Well, thanks for having me, Anna. We are very excited about these questions that we have drafted and knowing about your work and your experience, so I'll jump right into them. The first question we have for you today is how can effective reporting help people from different states and countries understand the threats posed by climate change and inspire effective and urgent action? Well, there are a lot of questions that people have. They understand that there are changes happening in our environment and in our world, but they don't always know what, and they don't always know what's causing it and what can be done about it. So the role of journalism is to help answer those questions for people, help them understand the connection between what's going on in the world and their lives. And I would say coming at it from a weather angle, as that was my background, is there really is a drive to keep people safe and prepared and with climate change, we're seeing such extraordinary changes happening so quickly that journalists and media in general can help the public stay informed on what these changes are. Thank you, Renette. I, I love that. That's so interesting. Uh, it's actually the first time I am speaking to someone who has this type of background, and I think it's so important uh, to uh, to really talk about climate change from this perspective. So I'm I'm really happy to hear about this answer. And my next question would be, how would you describe Climate Matters achievements in terms of its biggest contributions to science-based reporting? And how does local climate stories benefit from Climate Matters? So I'm gonna give a little bit more here to help people understand that the media ecosystem in the United States is we've got national news, but we also have a really strong network of local news too. There are 210 markets that we call them, media markets that are banked within our entire country. And then there's even smaller areas that have their own paper or radio station on top of that. So there's a lot of people that work in news and media in the United States. So when you have such a big country, you can talk about big trends and global trends and how that's affecting a large region. However, when you experience climate change, it's usually a very personal thing, or if you're connecting with it, it's the heat that you dealt with in that community, or the heavy rain that washed out your neighborhood, or a landfalling hurricane that's taking out an entire community. So it is very personal, very local. And so what we've done at Climate Matters is really try to take this global issue and break it down on a local scale. So it's not just talking about heat in general globally, but what does that mean for people in Phoenix, Arizona? What does that mean people for in Houston, Texas, and look at their data and their trends and help them to make their local stories. Because the heat in Phoenix, Arizona is very different than the heat we would say in San Francisco, California. You just get very different temperatures. Climate Central is our organization and we're a nonprofit. We are non-advocacy, non-policy. We're really focused on science and communication and we have several different programs. Climate Matters is one of those programs, and it started with TV meteorologists and expanded out to all of journalists. And primarily, we are in the United States, but we have worked globally with the TV weather presenter community to also take those same concepts of what's 1.1 C warming globally? What does that mean in your community to people around you? Because that's how you're going to inspire action. I think whenever you speak to people in terms of things they have lived and they have seen in their own houses and communities, it's so much easier to have them understand what is really happening at a, at a global scale. My next question would be, what is the importance of developing partnerships between media organizations, nonprofits, and academic institutions? And how do these partnerships increase capacities to reduce emissions? That's a fantastic question. To me, partnerships are key to everything. I mean, we're working in climate change. Time is such a major issue. We're trying to change the world and slow our rate of warming for future warming threats. And we don't have time to waste for that. Now, we are making changes as a society. They just need to happen faster, right? So in that spirit, there's a lot of people with a lot of strengths. This is not, I mean, 
there are climate tech companies and there's corporate parts of the world that also bring in climate into their work. But from our perspective, we want to work with people and their strengths to really accelerate the storytelling, accelerate people's understanding of what can be done on the solutions and response and adaptation side. And so we've got our strengths, other partners of their strengths. We work a ton with academic institutions. I mean, they're pumping out amazing research. So we're trying to help get it out to the world in ways that people understand. Because we all know, I mean, I come from a science background myself. I'm a scientist. A scientific published paper is its own language, right? So most of society isn't going to be able to consume that in the same way. So we help them understand why that matters and what can be done around that. And so that's scientific institutions, as you said, NGOs and nonprofits. Also, there's just a lot of people doing really good work in the climate space. So let's lift their voices and help them get those stories out. Thank you, Renate. I completely agree. I think rather than trying to become an expert on every single aspect of climate change, it's best to, to work on these partnerships to really support the cost. My final question would be, uh, what would be your top tips for youth who are interested in following similar professional paths as you? Can you share some of your imp most important lessons learned? The first thing I say to all students and youth right now is be curious and be lifelong learners because your path is going to change a lot. Everyone's does, especially nowadays with so much happening so quickly. What you think you're going on, you may go there, but it's going to be a windy road. That's just life. So things are going to come at you. Be a lifelong learner. Be curious. Keep asking questions. That's what we need in society is people to really absorb this information and come up with big ideas. And then the other thing I would say is, is don't be afraid. I mean, there are some big things we need to accomplish. We don't need the mindset of I can't do it or it's too hard. Think big, go big, and let's do this. Thank you very much, Bernadette, for sharing your time and perspectives today. They were truly enlightening. This is climate activist Anna Hanhausen. I add my voice to the voices of my net zero international youth peers to monitor the action of our world's leaders to achieve their net zero commitments. To the, together, we can achieve net zero.